Welcome back. It's time for the news schmooze. Carm, honestly, he was the sweetest guy I think I've ever, ever met. What do you think of Kevin? How, how do you, how do you, how do you uh, categorize him from a You know, uh, if therapy, we continue, I mean, if we continue like that soon, he will not be a person. He will be a symbol. A saint. A symbol of, of, of everybody deserves this. And he is like getting it, and we are all rejoicing and rooting for him. The thing that I love about him is he's like, hey, I hate my job. I mean, he's super honest. And who would not hate their job working at Burger King? Like and he doing, described it in detail how he cut his finger yeah, and he cut his hands. To, it's, it's hard work. It's hard work. I grew up with a bunch of jappy guys who whine about. Si- no, no, behind. nobody. You are the whining leader. Let me tell you something. I have a lot of friends who just sit and whine with these cushy, high-paying jobs. I have a reason to whine. On to the news schmooze. <laughs> Curious about your take on this, Carm. Twitter warned just now that governments around the globe are asking Twitter to remove content or snoop on private details of accounts at an alarming rate. The social media company, Twitter again, revealed in a new report that it fielded a record number of legal demands, nearly 60,000 during a six-month period last year from local, state, or national governments that wanted Twitter to remove content from accounts or reveal confidential information such as direct messages or user locations. Are you worried with, quote-unquote, big tech that you are being compromised? You're on Facebook. I'm not. I am not on Facebook. I am nowhere. I am not, not on anything. And I think that there is, time, there is reason to be paranoid here. There is a reason. Suppose, uh, is it like one party or one side or both sides? It's everyone, Carm. No one is safe. But, I mean, I think that this uh, new age of technology, I think this is our demise, to be honest. Joel, you are the most addicted and you always make this I'm very- making sure our show is staying on track. Carm, on to the next story. By the way, are we taping? Last week we weren't taping. Yes, we're taping. (laughs) (laughs) It's a good question. (laughs) No, it's a good time for this question. An hour into it. It's a great time to ask. Miami, where we live, is considering moving homeless people out of the streets and into into, island. Into Uh, city sponsored encampments on an island next to a sewage plant. Earlier this year, Miami-Dade's Board of County Commissioners asked city officials to pitch ideas on how to mitigate its homeless population in the city, which was recently recorded at 1,525 people. By the way, I was at that meeting. By the way, it's not a lot of They're going to move them to the northern- It's not a lot of people for all those millions. They're going to move them to the northern tip of Virginia Key, which is basically Key Biscayne, at a sewage treatment plant next to one uh, by a biking trail. What do you think of this kind of- uh, leadership horrendous treating treating them like animals corralling them into a corner no that's not what's hor- horrible if there's they a would, guy in miami they would put them on uh, uh downtown miami or in a nice section or a nice park no but to put them on a sewage plant in an island with a sewage plant and they cannot get off the island no it's like it's like being on gilligan's island Anyway, the guy who's leading this effort is named Joe Carroyo. He's been a commissioner for a hundred years. Oh, the same Joe Carroyo? Yeah, and he said uh, at the meeting, he's like, if you love homeless people so much, why don't you adopt a homeless person and actually try to start a campaign called, not adopt, it was just called adopt a homeless. Like, it was very derogatory. Adopt a homeless. Like, not even a person. By the way, he fights with this guy, Billy Corbin, who did Miami uh, Cocaine Cowboys on Netflix. And his real name is Cohen. So instead of calling him Billy Corbin, he calls him Little Billy Cohen. Little anti-Semite, this Joe, Joe Carroyo. On to the na- last question. This is a personal, personally devastating story. Bad news for Halloween enthusiasts. This year, you might be out of luck in the candy aisle. We're not going to be able to fully meet consumer demand. This is coming from the CEO of Hershey, Michelle Buck. The problem, consumers are demanding more regular and Halloween-themed candy than Hershey can make, at least for right now. The supply chain is the issue. They had to reduce their production of other less popular items, like the Choco Taco, which they cut out altogether 
They say that demand for sweets surged during the pandemic and has only gotten stronger. Yeah, because that's like a comfort food. I found a place here called Thrice. That's the name of the family that owns it. Thrice Ice Cream. And they make chocolate chip cookie sandwiches. Unbelievable. I went right after work yesterday. I have an addiction. 